And welcome back to welcome the Tommy back. and what is this show called? Rachel and Tommy show. <laughs> sometimes we'll say Tommy and Rachel. Sometimes we'll say Rachel and Tommy. We don't whatever, care. 50, 50. We don't have to have the first name or we, whatever. The T and R, R and T, R and T, whatever. We'll develop as we go. That's right. So we're back, and we are going to learn a little <laughs> bit about back. Rachel. Who is this? We, I would say Yankee, but I know that's like a derogatory term for y'all, but I don't care. Above I think Tennessee, I wait, I'm like, uh. yeah, no, I'm like, what? I'm used to it. Yeah, so. yeah. Who is this New Yorker? So, yeah. Tell me about like where you're from, where you grew up, how long you were there, and how did you end up down here? Okay, so born and raised in New York, and then uh, you know went to college in New York, lived in New York my whole life. That's where all my family is in New York. And then in 2009, I was like, I just, I need a, a change of life. Mm. I was working for my dad at his office. He, you know, primarily was an accountant, owned an accounting company, got out of college, trying to figure out who I'm going to be in this world. My dad started investing in real estate. So he opened up this like investment real estate branch in his office. And he was like, you know, you should really go get your real estate license. And I was like, okay, that's a great idea. I'm on the no plan plan. Yeah. Graduated with a business major. I mean, that's where'd you graduate from? From Stony Brook University in Long okay. Island. I graduated college in three years. I hated every second of it. Wow. I I was just done. Like yeah. I partied. I did everything you can do in high school. Yeah, I got same. in all the trouble you can get in. I lived the the great party life. Got out of my system. By the time I got to college and I'm watching these girls come home from bars and drunk on the floor and yelling and crying and screaming. Uh, I was already done with yeah. that. I, I was just, I was already mature. I was yeah. like, I'm done. I don't want to be here. I told my dad. I don't want to be in college. It's a waste of your money. This a waste of right. my time. And he's like, all my girls are going to have college degrees. Mine were the I same said, way. Like, you have to have a degree. Whatever. Okay. Fine. You tell me I got to do it. I'll get it done fast. Yeah. Literally, I graduated in college in three years. Okay. And then. I knew you went to college. I just, I never knew like. Yeah. In so Stony Brook. It was in, Lo yeah, it was Long Island. The first semester I went to, it was in uh, Oneonta in Albany, like, uh, you know, north okay. of Albany. And it was so cold, and yeah. I was miserable. miserable. And like, colder than where? So like, okay. So reference. I live forty five minutes north of the city. So like, I, I'm not country New York because there is a country. A lot of New York is country. Okay, I don't. So I live forty five. But... Yeah, it's <laughs> go to these colleges. Yeah. Um. So I live like forty five minutes north of the city, Westchester County, outside the city. And then Oneonta was like maybe two hours north, okay. and it, it just was a night and day world, and it, it was like farm. Yeah. So I went one semester. My parents came to visiting, you know, the first visit, parents visit, and I was like, "Get me the f get me out of get here. me out of here." I'm trying not to curse. I said, "Get me the f." I've noticed that today. You're really. I'm trying to refrain because like I don't know. Oh yeah, how this yeah. gonna play out? I know. No, I'm it's listening. not my New Year's resolution. I this I is know. how I talk. I'm trying not to as well, but I've let them slide. You have not let any slide. But... Um, I think I'm just being very conscious because I don't know where yeah. this is gonna go. <laughs> I know. Well, that's what like just, I just don't a sidebar, a sidebar here. Yeah. Like when I saw my assistant about it, I was like, you know, like. I, I think that's what people are going to be shocked about that I talk like a fucking sailor. Like, I know. I, you know what I mean? Like, I know. And I, no and one's it, gonna be surprised with me though. No, it's New Yorker. It's <laughs> They're like, more surprised I'm not saying. I think it I'm right more now. comfortable with you too, because like the f words, like the uh, like the word and. You know what I mean? Listen, but, I go to New York and I talk. To, I'm having just like co a normal conversation with my friends, or I'm home with my parents, or I'm yeah. at my grandma's house. The f word is like you use it in a sentence. I know. And I, I know. I listened to when I was first at the business. I had this client from New Jersey, New yeah. Jersey, and he was like really rough, and he talked like this, and every other word was fucking. What are you fucking do? I fuck it. And I was like, why is he yelling at me? Like, no. I don't get it, you know. But now I get it. I'm like, I get it. It's like the word and. This and that's, <laughs> that's, and and when my when my kids were younger too, I would I just you know I guess when they start to understand. I talk loud. So if I'm telling my husband a story at home, you could take it as we're fighting because right. all, I'm like expressing like, can you effing believe what this happened? Yeah. And then Bentley would be like, don't fight. I'm like, no, I'm, oh, just, talking. Talking. I'm just talking. Like yeah. I'm just trying to relay my day to daddy. Yeah. So go back to college. I went to Stony Brook. He, they transferred me, um, wanted to get out. I studied abroad for a semester okay. in Italy. Where? Italy, yeah. That was the best. Same. Like yeah. in Rome, love it. Yeah. Whenever I go back and visit, like it just brings back so many memories. So that was like my great takeaway from college was yeah, going, same. Yeah. studying abroad. And I, I, I didn't know you did that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I did, I was in uh, Florence when I did mine. I did, and I traveled to, to did Rome. Did you do it this and, summer? I did yeah. a summer program. I did a summer. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that was a really great experience that I'll always treasure oh, yeah. and all those people that we created those memories with. But then my dad, like the last year of college, he's like, you know, I'm starting to get into this real estate investing. And my dad's about like going to trainings and coaching and paying all this money for these coaches. And that's how this like 
coach world. So he had no past experience. He just was like, I want to get into the game. I don't even know. I should probably ask him. I don't even know what prompted it. Maybe he saw a commercial, an ad. I don't really know what prompted it. But he's always like, he's always been, you know, finances. And my dad's always been like financial freedom. Like he's always tried to instill that in us. So I think he didn't grow up with parents like that. So I think he was trying to figure out how to create financial freedom. Okay. So he really instilled that. So kind of later in your life though, that he started investing. Yeah, I was, I literally, it was probably 2003. Okay. So 2003, he already had his accounting business. So I got my real estate license in New York. I did like that crash, do it, get it done in two week course, took the test, passed the first time. And then I graduated college, so I started working in his office. So what my job was is to – there was the um, the courthouse across the street from his office. Yeah. So I would go to the courthouse, like, on a daily basis. And then at that time – I try to find it here, but I don't know if it's a thing anymore. You can see, like, when people stop making their mortgage payments yeah. and the bank sends a notice mm-hmm. that's recorded with the courthouse. Right. So I would go every day and pull that list. Yeah. And then I would hand write it on our pad and then I would bring it back to the office and we would send letters to people that were, you know, we thought were in the you know brink of yeah. foreclosure because that was what, yeah. what he wanted to do was to flip homes. Yeah. So did he like that was his first thing? He was flipping houses. Yeah. Or was he buying them just to, as rentals? So or what? he did both, but it, it started with flipping homes okay. from what I, I could recall. It was flipping houses. So that was like a big movement, though, in that time. Frame. I remember the seminars Huge. like traveling, like how to flip a house. He took to... me with him. I'm yeah. this young girl yeah. with all these men with power right. and egos. Men's world back then. And yeah. I, I, I did like because I got room service at night. So I, like, he went networking with the uh-huh. men because I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't even, I'm like 20 years old. Right. You don't drink or anything right. at that. I mean, well, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get it. I mean, it would be really weird if a 20-year-old little girl was like running around, you know, bar, these networking yeah. things. Mm-hmm. But it was cool. I, I, you know, I've been doing like a lot of reflecting. You know, it was so outside my comfort zone. And I've always put myself in places outside my comfort yeah. zone. So I think that's helped grow yeah, well, in that's all where these the years. Is, it know? is. Yeah. So I learned a lot. Like you're learning math equations, how to find rentals. And I think that just instilled goals in me of like wanting to own a commercial building and owning apartment complexes. And I think yeah. at a young age, I was just that's what he surrounded me around. And that was, ne- I never for once, I remember this conversation. I, I was in the car with my mom thought about this the other day too. And I was like, you will never get grandkids for me. I will just work. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going right. to, and I thought for some reason it'd be like corporate. Like I, right. I like to work my way yeah. up. Mm-hmm. So I always thought it was going to be like a corporate world. Didn't really have a plan, but what I was doing too on the side, I was working for him at the office, which I realized real fast office work is not for me. Like right. if I have to clock in, clock out, Can't do it. I became super depressed. Oh, and yeah. then the winter in New York, but I also was doing on the side personal training. So I've like always had a passion for like health and fitness. Yeah. I just, you know, you leave feeling good. You help someone make their mm-hmm. day better and you just, you know, kept them accountable. So I enjoyed that. So I would literally four or 5 a.m. in the morning, I would go to corporate women in New York City's homes. I would personal train them. They would get on the train. I would go to my dad's office and then I would do night trainings. Okay. So that's kind of yeah. what I did. And then I just got all day. All day. Yeah. And then I just said I needed a change. Mm-hmm. And South Florida, I had my grandma. She, she, they, my grandparents went back and forth in Florida. I had aunts there, cousins there. I always love South Florida. That's where we vacation. New as Yorkers kids. love Florida. We all li- like my people are there. Yeah, it's like little New York. It literally. I mean, is. everybody. The food. The you yeah. get your Italian food. So which part of Florida? So it was Delray Beach is where I moved to. Okay, and that's where your grandmother like they always vacation. So or they in Fort Lauderdale. Okay. So my aunt lived in Delray. I have an aunt that lives in in um, Miami okay. and then Fort Lauderdale. So, like, you know, that that south yeah. the, southeast mm-hmm. portion of Florida. I've, I, and until this day, I still feel like that's home. Yeah. So I've I'll, never been there, to be honest. I've never been in that section. That's insane. I know. Me. I really want to go. You've never been to Miami? No. Mm-mm. Okay, that's insane. Well, that weird? When you and your wife do your vacations, I, I would go, go to there. Miami, yeah. Well, we always say, oh, we'll go to the Keys. And then people are like, no. Oh, I love that. Oh, but see, everybody's like, don't go to the Keys. I think the Beach. Keys is a great drive. Yeah. It just... All of that. I just love South Florida. So I will end up there when the kids are grown. Me and my husband still talk about that. That's where I belong. Okay. Palm trees, sunshine, tanning. You love the palm trees. You always have. Iced coffee, yeah. laying by the pool, laying by the beach, having a nice Italian dinner, like driving my Bentley convertible one day. <laughs> yes. That's, It'll happen. That's my life. <laughs> so uh, I moved to South Florida and I worked at a Remax office. Oh. And it was really funny because we were one of the NAR conferences and he was there, the no. owner of that one. And I was like, oh my God. Did you talk to him? No, because it kind of ended a little awkwardly, so okay. I didn't. But you're like, look at me now. But 
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think a, a lot of people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I worked at the office. That was a great, like, little start down there. And then I met my ex-husband. And that's okay. where life kind of took a turn for the unexpected, we can say. So I met my ex-husband down in South Florida. He is originally from Alabama. Okay. So he's like, I want to live in Alabama. And I said. Why was he in Florida? What, what was he there for? Vacationing. Oh, and y'all just met on va- while he yeah. was on vacation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he's vacationing, met in South Florida. And then. Um, <laughs> 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 off air. Okay. Yeah. Off air. Whoopsie. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't realize He gets that a was. look from me and he knows. <laughs> We'll end it here. We're changing and topics then now. Maybe one day. So um, we moved to Alabama. So we moved to Alabama. His parents had a condo in Gulf Shores, the Driftwood. Okay. So yeah. they said, we moved in October. And then, oh, let's back up. I got pregnant. Okay. And I had a shotgun wedding in October in Naples, Florida. And then after that, we're like, let's, you know, move to Alabama. So we had the wedding in October. Okay, hold on. Can we just pause real quick? This yeah. is not going on left. How did you, how long did you know this guy before you got married? Okay. I mean, it's a very, um. Did you marry him because you got pregnant? Yes, because. Okay. I know. Italian and like, and you felt like I needed to do that and raise had, a family. So, and... yes. And we talked about this when I was in New York recently for my grandma's passing is I felt, I mean, I fucked up. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm getting emotional. But like, I fucked but you didn't. up. I know, but in it my, all happens for a reason. But you know, like, I know. You got the best thing in your life. You know what I mean? But like, at the time when you're 24 I years know. old, you're supposed to start this new life. You meet this guy. I told my mom I didn't want kids. Right. I never even thought I can get pregnant. I don't know what it was in me. I was like, oh, I can't have kids. Right. I don't know. Right. And then I get pregnant out of the blue, unexpected, just met this guy. Not, yeah. It's This is not daddy material. Not serious, and I knew yeah. that. Yeah. I, there was no one that had a child out of wedlock. Everyone gets married and has, and then you do it that way. You get married, you have kids. I mean, this is yeah. the way, mm-hmm. you know, I, know. I mean, today it's, it's not frowned upon. I, I felt pressure. I felt like I had this Jewish grandma, I had this Italian grandma, and it's just like, what the fuck are you doing? I know, I know. And I'm the first. So, um, so I was the first. So yes, I had a shotgun wedding and in moved. Naples and it was a beautiful wedding. So it should yeah. have been with my second husband, that wedding, but whatever. Yeah. But, um, you know, you'll watch I, – I haven't watched it in years. But in that video at that wedding, and I'll tell people, you see me looking at the exit. I, I mean, life happens the way it should. Mm-hmm. But I knew – like, I knew this was the wrong decision. Like, yeah. that's why I'm always like, listen to your gut. You have to do what's right for you. You it's, have to listen to yourself all the time. Because, like, every time I didn't listen to my gut, that's it like, in trouble. you know, know, bringing on this agent or not saying you can't be – you know – Every time I didn't listen to my gut with people, I always get screwed. But it always worked out the way it should. It so always does. I'm but not going to be upset about it. I always know instantly. Like yeah. my gut tells me. Instantly. I know. And sometimes and I. And it's just, like within 30 seconds, I, I can know. know if I'm going to trust you or like you or if you belong. You know what I mean? I know. Like it's. I know. And, and and sometimes I'm like I'm just being an asshole. I know. And when I do that, I always get burned. I know. Always. 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 Uh, always listen to your gut. Always. Yes. So. But got married. You got great things out of it. So. Uh, I did. Who I would never have known about Alabama. Right. I would never. You wouldn't have, be here. I would never have landed You'd in, be in Alabama. Miami. Mm-hmm. I would have been in South Florida. God only knows what I would be doing there. So got pregnant. Had um, moved to Alabama. Was in Florida. Got married. Moved to Alabama in their condo. And his dad was like, "You only." So it's October. Mm-hmm. His dad's like, "We're coming down for New Year's. So you only have until New Year's to figure out where you're going to live because we're coming down with our friends." Um. At that point, um. I had Bryce in in January. I was eight months pregnant. Okay. And now, like, basically homeless. Like, where am I going? I knew nothing about the area, so I did all the research. And really, he's from North Alabama, so it's not like he really knew so much about the area. So we, I started looking at Craigslist. You look every, yeah. every Craigslist was what a year thing. was this? This was in two thousand and ten. Okay. I had to be out December thirty first, two thousand and ten. So I was so like, the internet was around, but it wasn't like it is now. Craigslist. We just, yeah, it's Craigslist. It's like it's, Craigslist. Yeah. It's, it wasn't like what it is now. So I don't know what it, I think maybe there was just a lot of listings there or I was doing research. I was drawn to Daphne. I don't yeah. know what it was. And then, you know, like the Lake Forest market, there's a lot of homes there. There's a lot of rentals there. So I fell in love with this house in, um, da- you know, and I've never played house before. So it was yeah. my first time. I'm pregnant, about to have this kid, never read a book, playing right. house, playing wife. I mean, <laughs> too young, too fast. Mm-hmm. Don't recommend it, but it all worked out the way it should. 
Um, so I rented this house in Eagle Drive, and I actually show this weekend I was showing homes, mm-hmm. and the house that she wanted to see was across the street from that house, oh. and I, I was like, oh my god, I live there. <laughs> where it all started. Uh, where it all started. So lived in there, had Bryson in January. While I was pregnant with Bryce, I was like, let me get my real estate license down in yeah, Alabama because it's reciprocal. Yeah. So I just had to take the test. So I said, before he came, let me take the test and just get licensed and get that set up. So I did that. So I gave birth to Bryce January 31st, 2011, about to have a teenager now. And then, Crazy. you know, I, when you have a kid, your whole world, world changes, oh, as you know. Yeah. Like your priorities change. Mm-hmm. You don't. It's overnight. Literally, you have this yeah. human, and that's all that matters. Yeah. Like, I'm, I, I don't have, I can't help this adult, you right. know, his figure you know, out how to be an adult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't help him anymore. Like, this baby is priority. And it's a different kind of love, you know? Totally. And it's like, I mean, it, and it's weird how it's just like, totally different. You know what I mean? Totally different, but it's like obsessive. Like, it's I obsessive. want only yeah. the good. Like, yeah. I think about you all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, if the school calls, I get sick. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like, you just want good for your kids. So had Bryson, and then, you know, the relationship already wasn't working. It, it never should have happened. It's just, you know, God puts people in place. I'm grateful for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think probably around four or five months, it came to a head. Yeah. And, you know, it was like, you got to go. This isn't going to work. I mean, there was a lot of drama that came with it. I think that... I don't wish going through a first child and an experience. I don't wish what I went through on my worst enemy. Right. I mean, like I was going to sleeping in hotels, telling the front desk, don't tell them I'm here. I mean, it was a scary time. And mind you, I had no friends, no family, Nobody no spirit. Did. When I say it's me and a baby and a car and I mean, this is what it is. My mom had to fly in from New York often and they begged me to come back. And something in my gut told me to stay. I don't know what it mm-hmm. is, but you listen to your gut. Yeah. So I decided to stay. So the relationship ended. Um, I bought my first flip house because I was like, you know what? The real estate market just crashed. Mm-hmm. There was a the house on Ridgewood Drive. Yeah. Um, I pass it all the time. And I'm like, it brings back so many memories. It was like $70,000. Bought the house, lived in it with Bryson, fixed it up. And I started to do that. So I had my real estate license. I was working at a company, but I was, you know, flipping home. So me and Bryson did that like three or four times, lived in a house, got it remodeled while we were living in it and sold it. Hmm. And then I started my real estate career and I was just like, you know, I got to make this work. I mean, it's not like, it's not fun. This is, it, we're not playing anymore. Right. Like this is like real life, real fast right. at, and I wasn't prepared. We got prepared. bills to pay. We got mouths to feed. You and know. I'm by myself. Go so time. it was just a, a hard time. I don't, you know, looking back on it, I have no idea how I did it. Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't know how, but I just, I think there was something in me that just said, I'm going to make this work. And when I put my mind to something, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So you made connections here. Eventually. So are you still anchored with those people? Are they still your people? Yeah. You, yeah. So, uh, so there and was. where'd you meet them? You know, like. So there was like clients. No, like, like your people right now, like your friends, like your, Everything you know? came through real estate. Yeah real estate so mm-hmm. it's like i can honestly say like i don't have i still to this day like i don't have that group like yeah. my friends in new york like when i go home and i see my friends and i'm with them mm-hmm. like that's still my group like yeah. i never I, I never got past that they, right. they know me to my core and i think also i have a harder time letting people in i just don't i i just feel like people's intentions now with this rachel mm-hmm aren't the intentions that my friends who knew Rachel, Rachel are. Right, right. And I have a very hard time. I mean, I, I just don't. Yeah. They don't, I don't want anything I, from you. They're just yeah, friends. Yeah, I'm always know, like, yes. And I feel, yes. Mm-hmm. And they don't want anything. And they can laugh. They know I'm silly. Like, mm-hmm. they can joke. Like, they know everything I've been through. And I think there's this chapter of my life that people know about mm-hmm. that no one here does. And I keep that sacred sure. almost. So I, I don't. I'm a very closed off person and my family is like my people. Like right. that those are Your my family people. Is, yeah. And th- I tell my kids all the time, you're all each other have. Like That's it. Like don't spend your life fighting and like fussing yes. because you're going to be leaning on each other like one day, Absolutely. you know. Like my sister and I, this she's my best friend. Yeah. And we hated each other growing up. Like we just fought like cats and dogs. Yeah. I don't know if it's because we were so close in age or whatever it was, but it took us like going to college and maturing. And then that's we, your yeah. everything. They're yeah. I mean, she's you. my best friend. I call her. They're we gonna talk run like multiple there. times a day. Yeah, you know. Well, and I think in that aspect too, like I got lucky because my sisters did move to Alabama. So yeah. One, my middle sister moved like right after Bryson was born. Okay. So like those are my people. Like yeah. that's who I call to. If I want people to come over for dinner, or watch me, like that is my group. Yeah. You know, I have a very small group now, but it's so, okay. 
tell me how you went from you're an agent here. Obviously, you're you're working for another firm, probably. Yes. First, I was at Exit. I know. I know. And then, because I was at Exit at New York at the time, they had like the best splits. Oh, That's yeah. where you go. Yeah. But it, it was in Mobile. Mm-hmm. The, clo- the that one that they didn't have one in the Eastern Shore, so I switched to Keller Williams. Okay. And they were in Fairhope. So at the what time. was the what was the drive, or or the, what was kind of the light bulb moment for you, to say it's time for me to take a step out and open Elite. Like, how did that come? So I started after, you know, I flipped a few homes. I started to really get into it. And, uh, you know, when you're flipping homes, you're buying and selling properties. And then I, I didn't feel, I didn't know. I was like, I'm not, I don't want to give a, com- a p- part of the commission, you know, to a Keller Williams. It just didn't make sense for me anymore. Yeah. So it made more sense for me to open up my own company. I did it strictly for that. I'm buying and selling my own properties. I'm going to open up my own company. And that's what I did. It was me and one other agent. It was never, I never started it to say, I'm going to have a large brokerage or I'm going to have agents that work under me. It was me, one other girl, and it was for real estate investing. And that's That's all it it was. Just grinding. That's it. Yeah. And I'm going to sell. So I started getting Mm -hmm. into like buying and selling and working with clients too. So Um, it's really exciting now, like your, like where you are in your success. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, so tell the people, if you don't know, like now Rachel has how many brokerages? So I have, um, I have, Six offices. Okay. So we have offices, you know, Florida, Orange Beach, Loxley, Daphne, which is the original office, Mobile, Mississippi, and then, you know, owning Elite Rentals. So I we manage close to 100 properties for clients, too. Short-term and long-term. Short-term, yeah. And then we also have Elite Vacation Rentals. So we have a short-term division, too, because, mm-hmm. you know, it goes hand-in-hand with the condo selling. And um, it's a lot. Yeah. But you've grown from one agent. One to agent to like 175. 175. I mean, that's huge. You it's know? huge. Yeah. I mean, it's a great accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, and the the big thing that like we haven't really touched on is now you're remarried for how many years now? Yeah. So I I met my now husband in 2000. I mean, not long. <laughs> maybe Bryce was two. So yeah. pro- 2013, I met my now husband. We've been married 10 years next month. We're going wow. to Maui to celebrate. I'm very That's excited awesome. about that. Yes, congratulations. So 10 years. 10 years had- is a big mark. I mean, especially in real estate. Yes. But and also, he's like a very special person. No. I mean. John is like. you. He's a solid, like. You outstanding guy uh, he's he's a unicorn yes i don't mm-hmm. even and understand. he puts up with this i mean <laughs> and, no, not and only, grace puts up with this not it's only like, yeah. puts up but loves it yeah. like he I'm like crazy. laughs at it and like has a good time i'm with crazy it, you know? rachel and he has googly eyes and yeah, i was like yeah. this is this is not yeah like, that's what you you know I mean, people that's awesome. leave no mm-hmm. john john loves me unconditionally i'm i i mean that's the thing i've had a hard start to this whole journey of adulthood but the the rewards have been so great. Like yeah. I found my person. He loves me unconditionally. He will ride or die. He has my back. I trust him. I mean, he want. You know, one time he, he went to Lowe's. He's like, I just want to let you know, um, someone talked to me in the aisle, and I was like, I'm not okay. gonna get jealous. But that's no, okay. You babe. can't. Like, you gotta have trust. You no, can't be jealous. I tr- like, what like it, you know? literally trust John with yeah. my soul. Like mm-hmm. he knows me inside, outside. Like he knows everything about me. Yeah, that's um, the way it should be. He's the yeah. best dad. Like he's the best supporter. And he did adopt Bryson, my 13 year old. So awesome. he adopted Bryson. Like four years old so it's it's a good story overall yeah. i mean it's a good it's a good story mm-hmm. it has its wars it has its you know highs it's low yeah. you know it's yeah a, absolutely it's a it's a story yeah yeah but he is he's a great guy he's and great. i was like the first time i met him i was like so what do you do john he's like whatever she tells me you know yeah and that's the <laughs> I'm best. Like, no really he's like no really i, no. I do what she tells me it, <laughs> it's the best and it's a it's a great you know man for my children to watch yeah. you know I, I've never met another human like that. Literally, you know, you wake up every day. I don't know who I'm waking up to. I don't know if I'm going to be high, low, sad, angry. I I don't know who she's going to be. He wakes up the same human being. And Mm -hmm. it's so nice to be around an energy like that. Because I'm, I I mean, it's a wild card. I've gotten better at this the older I get. But he's just like a constant. He's just a good, he's just a good human. Mm -hmm. They don't make people like him. Yeah. I don't know where he came from. I know. But it's, it, it's it's nice that I ended up with someone completely opposite of me. That's how it is, though. I mean, it works because Grace is the same way with me. You know, she's like the solid, the steady. It works the, the best. Yeah. I could never be with like an A type like man, no. like because it. it I, and I'm not. It is not going to be easy to be my husband. No. First of all, 
you know, my maiden name is Romash. I used it for the longest time. We would do like news articles for our family and it would be John Romash. <laughs> he laughs, you know, yeah. but not all men would laugh. No. Uh-uh. He takes it. He's like, whatever. I'm Romash. I'm Reese. Whatever. I yeah, Call yeah. me whatever Call you whatever. want. So well, you know, it was a funny story, too. Like, we went out with them one time on the boat. And we're going to meet at her condo, and they have a, gar- a, a gate yeah, yeah, with yeah, a guard. Yeah, yeah. And so she's like, yeah, I called them. You're just tell them you're, you know, with me, and they'll get you the pass, whatever. I'm, like, arguing with this guard yeah. <laughs> for, like, 10 minutes. I can't get in the freaking – I'm like, Rachel Romash. Mm-hmm. It's Rachel – and then I was like, wait, is that her married name? Mm-hmm. So I had to go to Facebook to look up, oh, yeah, it's Reese. You know, yeah. I forgot it was a Rachel Romash Reese. I know. They're like, oh, yeah, okay, you, you're welcome, Mr. Stanton. Miss Reese is waiting on you. I'm like, that is weird. I know. I started, it's always Rachel Romash. I, yeah. And I did. I started using the Reese more, too. Yeah, recently. Yeah. Because I think I like I, it. It was so, you know, when I first started real estate, I, I took my ex's last name so fast. All my real estate signs were that last name. You know, if you get divorced, guys, you got to change yeah, all your all signs, over. start your name, rebranding yourself. So for the longest time, I was Rachel Romash until the real estate commission questioned something. And I was like, it's time to be Reese. Yeah. It was like your little security <laughs> blanket. you know. So Rachel Romash Reese, because okay. Romash never goes anywhere. Yeah. I know. So yeah. it's been a long journey. I'm, I'm thankful for it. I've learned a lot of lessons down the road. Mm-hmm. Do you think that um, working for your dad when he started his investing that kind of helped you, like when you moved here, like this is what I'm doing. I'm going to move in this house. I'm going to buy this house. I'm going to do this. Yes. Use that money to buy the new one. Do it. Yeah. And I think also, you know, being from New York helped a lot because we are, you know, in New York, it's 24 seven. Things don't close. Everything's open. You're always going. And I'm not saying that's a great thing because I do love the Southern culture about slowing down. Sundays are for family and church. Like I appreciate that now, but I also think when I got started because I came from, you don't stop. Like that's what you do. I was 24 seven. I like grinded out morning, day and night. I had parents that own their own businesses, so that's just what I was. Yeah, so it probably pushed you ahead. It, you know, of a I, lot of I, I honestly think being from New York mm-hmm. really gave me What's like your this. advantage. Well, people come here all the time, and, and especially like start. They'll be brand new. They'll get their license. They'll come, and I'm and I'll say, well, let's work on your sphere because that's really where your business is going to come from. And they'll go, well, I'm not from here. I don't know 200 people. I don't know this. It's like, well, you probably know a lot more people than you realize because yeah. you go to the same restaurant, you go to the same gas station, sure. you go to the same grocery store, whatever it is. But there are people who come here who know absolutely no one, because that's an excuse I hear all the time. Well, I'm not from here. People are from here. They, they know people, they get it. But there are people, like my dad, he's not from here, and he's grown a successful business. Absolutely. You are not from here. You have grown a successful business. Most of the agents in this area who are successful are not from here yeah. and deep-rooted. There are some that are. Yeah. You know, but it's hard. I mean, because I'm always like, um, oh, gosh, what's our friend? From the, I, I I'll kill him in the alleyway. What's oh? Uh, um, I was just thinking about her, gosh. Anita uh, no. Adorna. Adorna, we love Adorna. Yeah, Adorna's Adorna, we great. Love you. She's a great seeker. Adorna Carroll. She she always says, you know, you could sling a dead cat and hit a realtor, and that's really true for down here in Baldwin County. True. It's still very small, Alabama. Yeah, and we have thirty six hundred agents in our area, so it's, it's like your mom's cousin is a realtor, your sister's boyfriend's a realtor, everybody is a realtor somewhere and knows a realtor, so. The fact that you know no one and you're coming in here and making a name for yourself and, and this I th- empire, yes. I mean, that's a big deal. I think you know? that is the greatest accomplishment, and that's what I tell new agents all the time is, like, if you don't know anyone, I can do it, you can do it. You know, no, like, I had no one to even watch my kid. Yeah. Like, one time I had to show up at someone's door with a baby. That was not the plan. Thought the ex could handle it for a few hours. Couldn't. Wasn't yeah. there to help. And I'll never... You gotta fr- go with it. You and I got. It. And I, I mean, I'm mortified to think I showed up to a door with a baby. I'm mortified because yeah. now I have this perfectionist about business and it's like strictly business. Don't talk in the background. Don't let the dog bark. And I'm right. very perfectionist now. Yeah. I, I had no option. But did you get the listing? I got the freaking listing. Okay, but see, I think that's really what we I got need to listing. take away that we always forget. We try to like put on this facade, but really the clients and the customers are buying you. I know, you know but I'm mean? a young... I'm a young, yeah. I don't, and I don't understand. I, got, I I wish I could have recorded that listing appointment. I'm a young 24 year old girl with a baby yeah. in tow, yeah, and I'm but, sitting in front of a husband and wife, and I got the listing. Yeah. And I still to this day talk to that client. I still drop that king cake off in February. I still talk to him. I still and I still thanked him because I don't. He didn't know how much I was go. They didn't know what I was going through that day. Yeah. That was like a I left hysterical crying in a moment. And I got the listing. And they took a chance on you. you and know? I didn't. I didn't do it for sympathy. I had no other option. Mm-hmm. You can't. You don't leave a, a almost a newborn baby in the car. Right. 
No. It was horrible. That yeah. was, Im- I was more. But it's, you know, it's, I mean, it's because it's even, I mean, there were some realtors down here for years that were like, oh, you have to have a Mercedes and you have to have this, you have to do that. And my dad, for the longest time, he drove a pickup truck. You yeah. Know? And it was a single cab pickup truck, beater pickup truck, whatever. He said he got more business because of the pickup truck. He said it's almost like they felt sorry for me. So they oh wanted my to. Oh, my God. I've got all these kids in a pickup truck in there. That you know? is so too funny. That was his advantage over it. You know, it's yeah. like. People want to buy into you exactly. and support you as a person, not, yep. you know, this yep. facade that you're putting out it's true. there. You know? And I think also, you know, you know, flipping homes, I had this confidence about me because, you know, I think being a real estate investor, you 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 have this confidence in real yeah. estate because you do so much in real estate. I, I bought and sold so many of my own property. So I've been in their shoes, too. Mm-hmm. So I'm very relatable as an agent. Um, you know, it's been a great journey. I mean, yeah. it's. What's to come? Everyone asks, like, what's your plan? What's your goal? And it's just, I think at this point, like we talked earlier, it's just, it's freedom. Yeah. Like, I want more mental freedom. I want to be present with my children. I I don't want to, if it's not making me happy, I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. Well, it's like nobody wants to be on their, their deathbed and they're asked, you know, what's the what's something you wish you would have done All more? day long. No one's going to say, I wish I worked more. Hell I wish no. I made more money. No. It's I wish I spent more time with my children Absolutely. or my family or had more memories, you know, and that's what's important. And I think really, like you and I, I do feel like that's kind of where we connected a lot. A hundred percent. Was that we, that was our priority. Absolutely. Like my family's always going to be number one. Always. Yeah. Always. It's a short they amount of time. They grow up so fast. So fast. And it's depressing. So like making family trip, like I'm always into, you know, I mean, these family trips are like, these are my time. I'm, I'm on a trip. We're booking the next trip. Like mm-hmm. I always need, I want things to look forward to. I want to share the world with my kids. And yeah. it's just, I mean, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And that's what I tell my agents too. You're, you know, things are hard in real estate. You think it's the end of the world because there's always emotions. There's mean people, nice people. If you think about your family, you know, I have pictures of my family everywhere mm-hmm. because that's what gets me through. At the right. end of the day, You don't have to like me. This didn't work out good. I'm sorry. But what I'm going home to matters. That's right. And now I tell myself too, I'm like, is this going to bother me on my deathbed? Am I, is this situation going to bother me on my deathbed? And it's, the answer is always no. And I think that's a good thing to, I mean. You have to put it into perspective because you always like in real estate, especially me, because it's, I'm not just dealing with buyers and sellers. I I run a brokerage. I'm dealing, you know, there's a lot of emotions. Depending on you, a lot of money involved. It's a lot. Then you rental properties. That's a whole other animal. animal. That's a constant headache. Mm -hmm. Morning, day and night. There's always an issue somewhere, some property, some owner. There's always issues. And I think that you just have to say, you know, it's just, it's just part of it. You got to roll with it. Tomorrow's mm-hmm. a new day, and just roll with it. And we're we're not guaranteed our next breath. No. And I certainly don't want to be no. on my dying. You know, I'm I'm dead because I'm worried about someone else's business. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like absolutely making a client upset or making them. You no, know, I, I mean, mean, I really, I think for me, for in perspective, it was. When I stopped trying to make everyone happy, uh, and that's because you thing try to, to make do. everyone happy, it's, and you end up making no one happy, and you're miserable. People around you are miserable because you have a stank the attitude. The hardest thing to do. Yeah, and you you have to turn it off. It's you know? so and you, true, yeah, and it's hard. And setting the boundaries and sticking to them because now I have a thing like I don't be bothered on the weekend unless something's burning down. The and lenders aren't open. If it's like nine o'clock, I'm like I'm not texting. Well, Marshall. and that's the hard, <laughs> but that's the hardest thing is because. So like I don't like a to do list. So if you don't yeah. answer, they ask a question on a Friday night. All right, you got to put that on your to do list for Monday. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, just don't answer because then you set that expectation for that client yeah. that all right. And it's a lot more so with the rental stuff. It's like all right, if I respond on a Saturday, you're always going to ask me on a Saturday mm-hmm. when like that is my time. Right. So I do. I was very smart. I separated the emails and I don't have that one on my phone. Mm-hmm. And That's I only good. check it in the morning and night. That's right. And the mental Monday <laughs> piece, Monday through Friday, yeah. and the mental piece that it has given me, yeah. you just got to set systems Well, and in place. I think, too, like that we connect there, too, is like I have a, a management company as well. Yeah. Oof. And it will, it's a whole other animal. Whole and other people animal. who have never done it, and who animal. don't do it, it will literally drive you into the ground. And consume your entire life. A hundred And I let it do that for oh, sh- a the short, uh, yeah, for the beginning. How can I make, oh, you think you live in a five-star hotel? Yeah. There's, there's a scratch here. Let me make it better for right. you. Let me do this. Mm-hmm. Like I know. And then it's like, you know, or, or, and it's like you said, they're calling on the weekends. I finally put into play, you know, if I have to send somebody, you're going to pay the service fee oh, plus this and plus that. 
And they quit calling. Well, and I say put it into the portal. Put it Once in the they portal. Had a, one, because now you don't have my cell phone yep, number. You don't call you me. Don't, you got to mm-hmm. look me up to find me. That's right. But and you got to do some digging. You, and now everything, you have an issue, you put it in the portal. Well, you know what? People do complain a lot less when they got to go work to put That's in right. the complaint. Mm-hmm. So, and I'll answer it once in, in, in the portal. Absol- but Monday and, but then through staff Friday, can see it. That's like, right. That's the thing. Like, if you send it to me, I'm on an appointment or I'm training or I'm doing something like this. I'm not going to see what's Everything happening, but staff will. Mm-hmm. So That changed my life was like systems. getting a system. Systems. Yeah. That's yeah. all what it comes down to. I think in business, that's, you know, you're growing a business. And I think in real estate, the market boomed. I got to like double my agents and the, the systems just weren't in place. So now yeah. it's like oh, getting the right system and staff. Yeah. And I think it's important. Like the, the ultimate goal is like we talked about it before. We want our agents to be successful. Absolutely. We want them to be more successful than we are. A hundred percent. And and the real goal is finding a way to replace myself. A hundred. So that the business can still yeah. function and it is all about systems and checks and balances and that and it's hard that, it is hard that's, that's the, hard the hardest part. thing because i feel like you know you know i've made some staff changes last year i feel like things have gotten better but i still feel like i get more participation if it comes from me yeah. and that's the hardest thing because it like, has to start from the top i know and if it comes from me more people show up but mm-hmm. if i put a staff member in charge i feel like it so i'm still working things out you know i'm yeah. It's, business is Ever there's no and, right way yeah. you're always going to be learning every year it's going to be something different mm-hmm. you're going to learn from all your mistakes and it you just you got to give yourself grace Absolutely. i put so much pressure on myself yeah. i'm like i want to make every i'm not going to make everyone happy i sourced them the other day i one of these like millionaire business owners on jay shetty again <laughs> he was like if you want to be liked don't be a business owner that's right and it's the truth yeah or don't be a leader yeah i mean period because you do not I'm have not friends. gonna make everybody yeah. happy and you know what and you have to tell people that, no exactly and that that was and that's the hardest i mean i, I love to say no to people but in business and like it's helping so people, it's hard. hard to say no it's so hard like but you days, have to some and some people it's so hard have to hear it so and hard. they back down when you say no it's so true you gotta say most up. times nine times ten it just doesn't and i say no and then it's like yeah. You know? you and, if, s- and if you can't respect no, then this may not be the yeah. place for you. You have to set up the expectations. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people are only doing to us what we're allowing them to do to us. Yeah. Okay. So switching gears here, we didn't mention also you have a very giving heart and you have like Aww. a, you know, <laughs> 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 and you have elite gifts back, yeah. which you started, which is. Yes. So a, I think, you know, nonprofit. Y- yeah. being that single mom back in the day, I mean, I, you know, it, it wasn't always what it is now. Mm-hmm. So I always knew I was like, you know, Baldwin County has given me so much. I've said this in my speeches as president at Baldwin Realtors. It's my duty to give back. Right. That's another thing. You know, you succeed in real estate. You become a seasoned agent. You're doing that because the community is giving you this business. That's right. You better give it back. That's right. You have to. And you don't have to. We don't got to prance around. I do this. I do that. There's so many things that I do that people don't know about. But mm-hmm. you've got to give it back. What you get, you shall. What you give, you shall receive. That's right. But you give, you shall receive. So, yes, I started Elite Gives Back uh, probably five years ago now. And it was just, I just want to help people, mm-hmm. you know. And people, we all go through things. And I think now more than ever, people are struggling. And yeah. So, it's tough. I mean, right now, it's great. You go to the grocery store and you have five things. And that's $100. It's hard. You know? I, it's hard. I don't, I don't know how single parents are doing it. I don't know how one It's very hard to be a single it. parent right now. Everything. And we're not going to see the prices come down. No. And it's Same with, with, I mean, like housing. you and I talking housing. Like my first home I bought was 74000 Your first home here was seventy. Seven, yes. We're never going to see those prices never. again. And, like and it's rents. a shame. And that's one thing I'm like, I wish I would have been smarter I and know. bought more homes. You know what I mean? I, or just held on some. And or held on to it. I know. I, I know. did not need, I mean, I made a lot of money off of it when I sold I it to help me buy the new one. But I, I wish I would, I would love to have a Trust rental. Trust me, you know? I know. Five hundred dollar payment. It paid off by now. I wouldn't you know? be sitting here, guys. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> I would be in South Florida driving my Bentley and not uh-huh. working. That's <laughs> tanning. Right. tanning. Tanning. Not winning. Tanning. No, tanning. <laughs> tanning. Starbucks. Nice Italian dinner. There That's you go. What we doing. Okay, so on a serious note. Yeah. You just recently lost your grandmother. I did. You know, I I saw your tribute to her, and mm. I was very moved by it. And I, I mean. It was very moving, you know, to see like you and your sisters look a lot like her. Yeah. You know? What is one thing in your life that you feel like is is um, in your life from her? Do you know what I'm saying? Like like that yeah. you do because of her? Um, confidence. She, my grandma had like, yes, I mean, she had more confidence than I did. She yeah. was like. 
I mean, she didn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. She's like, this is what it is. Yeah. Take it or leave it. Like she said something. Th this is the way it is. There's no convincing her. Like this is what That's it, it is. Don't even um, ask a question. That's don't even it. ask a question. Is this your Jewish grandmother? Or yeah. Your, so okay. it's my Jewish grandma. So, you know, I mean, you grow up and there's, she's, she's a, everything's part. And I, I, maybe this is where I get it from. I think I, I do get it from maybe the Jewish side, but like everything's perfect. Yeah. So I think in a lot of aspects, I, I never, you know, for me as a grandchild, maybe my mom and my aunts know better, but like. You never saw her sad. You never, everything was perfect. Mm -hmm. You don't talk about anything. Everything is perfect. Well, that's not how I am. No. So I learned that aspect that that's not the best way to live for mm -hmm. me, but it's general. I think the generations has changed now. Right. We're like, you go to therapy, you talk about it, mental health, right. where she was just like, everything's perfect. And like, your hair is perfect. It would kill her because I used to bite my nails. And mm -hmm. she literally was like, I'm not, I'm going to give you this diamond ring when you stop biting your nails. Like she hated that because it was like <laughs> perfect. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I was not perfect. Right. But you know, my grandma loves us unconditionally. She's just a tough woman. And yeah. I think I got a lot of that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a tough woman at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Yeah. When you know me, my walls come down, but I right. think she's just, she's a tough Jewish woman. And here I am in there an Alabama go. world. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I tell people all the time, you're my one Jewish friend. Uh, and I don't know no. if I'd say, I mean, can I say you're like my top tier Jew? Can yeah, I say yeah, Jew? Yeah. That's, <laughs> Is that derogatory? I, I take no offense at anything. I know. I was telling like... Uh, a Jap, a Jew, like yeah, nothing. I told Grace, I was like, you know... I, when we're having this banter and talking back and forth on a podcast, you know, I'm like, I'm going to tell my top tier Jew, like yeah, yeah, yeah. some things that she probably can't relate to. It's so true. I mean, it is. Yeah. You know, but like, for instance, like, um, subscriptions, like, you know, my Jewish friends, you, you know, y'all hold on to your money. You know what I mean? Like you don't just frivolously I, spend. Well, I think I, I do more so, but I think but, I got that from my Italian father. Yeah. So I do. I'm mm -hmm. not. I I was at one point where I'm just like you stare at the bank. You, yeah. I, you like it's like an obsession. Like you mm -hmm. see the numbers. You got this goal. Now I'm just like if I want to fucking hard, give I it. I hard. I did it. I'm, I'm gonna. gonna but it. like it's more so like giving. Like if yeah. I know someone's having a hard time. You know, I had a I have a friend that was just having a. I Venmoed her a thousand dollars just to make her day better. Wasn't expecting it. Just make her yeah. day better. I don't hold. And you it didn't on. have a camera in your face doing it as you did it. And you know. No one knew. I didn't advertise it. Yeah. Screenshot. Hello. This is what right. I did. No. I think that no Jewish people we hold on to our money and mm -hmm. you know we you know we don't spend frivolously. But yeah. I'm an exception to that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and Hence, I'm okay with Gucci, that. Right? I'm not gonna drive myself <laughs> crazy over yeah. it because another thing is too. I die tomorrow. For I, I'm not gonna take it with you. Can't me. take it with you, yeah. So Enjoy no, it. I'm gonna go Enjoy on family life. vacations. Yeah. I'm gonna spend it, and you know, if I think I'm spending too much, I'll pull the reins. Pull the reins back. back, yeah. Recalibrate. I mean, store up, go again. I have rentals. I have other sources of income, and mm -hmm. it's just that's the way I built my life. Yeah, yeah. But yes, we do hold on to our money. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. We do. <laughs> okay, so for 2024, yeah. What are some some goals or some things personally. Yeah, so that you it's want a big year. I'm turning 40. I'll probably be mentioning that every Podcast. month of the uh, <laughs> because I think it's a hard number that's about to hit me in like 10 months. Um, freedom. I, I just I want to just have more freedom mm -hmm. in my mind at work. I just want to feel more free. Yeah. And I just want to be happy. So you know I've always put people before myself. I mean I'm not going to stop that to an extent. But I just really, if I, my gut feeling says no about this person, that's, you know, interviewing an agent for my company or, you know, someone's just not right fit for my company, I need to speak up. I can't let things come to a head and not hit it head on. Right. I just want peace. Right. Like, I just want to be happy. I want peace. I want to get out of my car every day, come to my house, and I just don't want to have any baggage to bring into that house. Yeah. I want all positive energy. So I'm going to work right. hard to get there. And, yeah. it, you know, you know, in our industry, it ain't easy. No, it's not. It's, it's not easy. You wake up, up you down. think you're on top of the world. Life's great. You get mm -hmm. this Reality check. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Literally. I know. Every day is like that. You literally never know what's going to happen. No. Day day. And that's why I always think, like, do I want my kids to get into this? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I don't yeah. have to. But, I mean, also you think, like, it's been a really great business for your household. It's been a great household. business. You know what I mean? Like. It, it, it affords us great opportunities, I think. It know? has, but I, there's also a price that you have to pay. That's true. There's a price. And, you know, some people can handle it better. Yeah, I think uh, maybe because I'm a woman, mm -hmm. you're. I think men have a tendency like, F it. Like, yeah. cut it off, whatever. 
there's more of emotions to women sure. that you have to learn to, you know, just set it aside. Yeah. You know, but it, it just eats at you internally. So it, So what's one takeaway then that you would give someone brand new in the business or getting ready to start maybe year two and yeah. they haven't had any success? What's something you would Um time management. Listen, it all comes down. I put, I, I think it was at the NAR conference, or someone said something. You know, the difference between a billionaires and paupers is your time. We all have the same 24 hours in the day. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between me and a billionaire? What they did with their time, and it, yeah. it it's it holds true to real estate. What I did as a single mom with my time was I made phone calls every day between eight and ten. I had appointments. I was writing letters. I was doing mailers. So it it, it literally this business all comes down to your time. And then your communication. Mm-hmm. Are you following up with people? Are you reaching out to people? I mean, yeah. follow up, time, communication. I mean, it, it, it's very basic business to mm-hmm. grow. But everybody's always trying to reinvent the wheel. I know. You just, like there's no there's, wheel to re- – It's nothing is new, nothing is creative. Just like, be consistent be with consistent. it. Be consistent. It's work time yes. after time after yeah. time. That's, communication, consistency. Yeah. You get what you put in. Exactly. And then, you know, you have agents that – they just don't time block properly. Right. But then it's your fault. Right. <laughs> it all comes down to time block. Yeah. Okay, I have this training today at 10 o'clock. You know, I was doing cold calling on Saturdays. I started doing that at my office. 175 agents, two show up. I know. I showed up. Right. I, I want to be home with my kids in my pajamas. Mm-hmm. I'm showing up for you. It's all about time block. I understand showings come up, but this is my thing. If I if I time block an educational thing, the buyer calls – I can't show it this time. We but can't I can show, show it, it because I'm already booked that time. So, and if they respect you and respect your time, yes. they're going to say yes. I, I'll, I'll make that happen. Exactly. You know, they're going to rearrange their time. Or you call people a are so to scared to say I can't right now or no. You know what I mean? But like, you have to because this is the thing too. Yeah. The the those clients that you're jumping hoops going backwards for those are the clients that are not loyal That's to right. you. They're going to So those go are the clients that probably else. won't even buy from you if yeah. they're making you jump through all these hoops and they don't respect you. No, I can't do two. I have to do four. Mm-hmm. But also, being a brand new agent, it's also hard. Well, yeah. You're, because you're like, oh, I need that sale. I need some income. And I get it. There is, I get that, yeah. There is grind work. And yes. you are going to have to probably not have as many boundaries as you are as a single, mm-hmm. as a seasoned but agent. But you have to be consistent. And you can't be flaky. If oh. I'm telling you I'm coming to your training, then I'm giving you my word. I'm coming to your training. Absolutely. And I'm going to put it on my calendar. Yeah. And then, just like you said, if they call it, can you do an open house? Or can you do this? Or can you do that? Show yes, up. Yes, after this time. I can't do it this time. I got an appointment. Just show up. I mean, that's all it comes down show to. Up. Yeah. It's not brain surgery at the end of the day. That's right. So everyone ha- everyone can succeed. I mean, there's a wealth there's of... plenty of business to go around And there's for plenty of business. And you go on YouTube. You, could, you know how many things you could learn on oh, YouTube God. in a weekend oh, if know. you really wanted to? It's All like these drinking books. from a fire hydrant. I mean, I mean there's so many yeah. things that new agents can be learning on a daily basis. It's just, are you applying it and are you being consistent with That's it? That's right. That's what I tell people. You get as many designations as you want. You go to all the trainings you want. Yeah. But if you don't implement right. anything, then it was all for naught. It's so true. It's so true. You know, so get all the letters behind your name. But if you're not going to do anything, then it's it wasn't. It's so true. Yeah. But everyone, everyone has the tools to succeed in real estate. There it's a go. great career, but mm-hmm. are you going to do the work? Are you going to do the work? It all that's comes right. down to you and the work. And that's right. And so to, that will conclude our session for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah. We hope to see you back here again on on our next yes, next episode. Podcast 2024. That's right. We're going to make it happen. New goals, new dreams. That's right. Thank you for right. joining us. Stay tuned. See you next week. All righty. Bye. Bye.